Welcome to Tickner Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 22nd of February with me, Patrick Munley. The US bond market has been the epicenter of global financial markets in recent weeks and bond investors will eagerly be awaiting semi-annual monetary policy testimony from Fed Chair Powell on Tuesday. His challenge will be to express confidence in the recovery, but not too much confidence such that the bond market slide turns into a collapse. Typically, the Fed finds the right words on these occasions, most certainly downplaying the forthcoming rise in inflation into the second quarter, such that the bond market decline can probably stay orderly. US data in the week ahead should be a modest upward revision for the fourth quarter 2020 GDP figure, and then on Friday, January personal income numbers. This is expected to jump on the back of stimulus checks, but should be priced in by now. We'll also see the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, the core PC deflator, which is expected to be contained near 1.4 to 1.5% year over year in January. Uh, the coming week should also see progress on the $1.9 trillion fiscal stimulus bill, where a vote could go to the House floor on Friday. This suggests a tough week for bonds and potentially some further support for the dollar. Yet the dollar has struggled to make much headway on the recent 20 basis point rise in US real rates. And as long as Powell can convince the market that loose policy is here to stay, the reflation story should continue to limit any advance for the dollar. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index has discussed in last week's session, and we've been looking for a breakdown through the sending trend line support anticipated bit of back and filling which we have done and whilst we hold below the descending trend line at 91.30 I'm looking for a break of monthly range support at the 89.90 level to get a retest of the uh, price cycle lows at 89.20 en route to an ideal test of the 87.50 area. At this stage only really a close back above uh, 91.50 would suggest that we have further work to do on the upside in terms of a corrective move in the dollar index. Uh, the euro had survived some strong uh, dollar strength and could enjoy some strength on Monday, where the German EFO number is expected to surprise to the upside. Friday's German com uh, composite PMI for February was slightly stronger than expected, uh, led once again by the manufacturing sector. This positive sentiment being echoed in EFO expectations could suggest Germany was weathering the lockdown slightly better than expected. We'll also hear from Christine Lagarde on Monday. Uh, this year's consolidation in the euro seems to have calmed the ECB down a little. Uh, the euro did not feature prominently in the January ECB minutes. From a technical perspective, as the euro dollar holds above the trend line support, which now comes in just below 120, I'm looking for a grind higher to ultimately get a test, a retest of the prior cycle highs at 123.45 uh, and to extend through there to ultimately get a test of the 125.50 area. Sterling, it was yet another strong week for the currency, uh, benefiting from this still not overly long sterling speculative positioning, and the ongoing good news on the vaccination front that points to a strong economic rebound for the second quarter. Should Chair Powell deliver a cautious message on Tuesday that A, won't increase expectations of QE tapering, and B, underscores the outlook for the deeply negative front-end US rates, the upside pressure on sterling then should remain in place. While sterling is now trading at modest, modestly overvalued territory based on short-term uh, financial modelling, this should now be considered as a new normal as the switch from Brexit-related uncertainty to the vaccine rollout-related upside to the UK growth outlook argues for more frequent periods of sterling valuation overshoots. Domestically, focus will be on PM Johnson, who is set to unveil the roadmap for reopening the economy on Monday. While the underlying message is likely to be cautious with no formal date set, the fact that the UK is moving towards such a roadmap underscores the constructive outlook for sterling for the coming months, particularly versus other European currencies. Uh, the UK jobs report on Tuesday should also suggest further stabilisation in the unemployment rates. So Sterling got the test of the 140 level, we saw a little bit of supply into the 
uh, closing of the session on Friday. What I'd be looking for now is some potential back and filling here. Ideally, I'd like to see a retest of the 137.50 area to uh, re-engage on the long side, looking for a move to test up into the 141. 30 is the next upside objective. At this juncture, really, we would need to see a close back below 135.70 to suggest a more deeper corrective phase for sterling. Uh, Dolly Yen, seen some heavy rotation trade recently. Uh, large rises in US yields have been supportive, but the relationship has been fickle. Um, also tend to think that a decline in US money market rates into summer, for example, the three-month US dollar LIBOR could fall, let's say, 10 basis points on the back of US Treasury running down its general account. This could encourage Japanese investors to increase dollar hedge ratios, which would be a negative for the dollar. Friday sees a virtual meeting of G20 finance ministers and central bank governors. Normally, FX markets wouldn't get too excited about the FX language in the release communique. However, this time the global public health emergency will dominate and the focus will be probably on ongoing stimulus and the vaccine rollout. Yet Treasury Secretary Yellen could again be asked her view on US Treasury FX policy. Expect a reiteration of market-led exchange rates, although suspect that Washington wants a weaker dollar this year to avoid all the US stimulus checks being spent on imports. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen traded up into the Resistance zone just above 106, and we've seen a pullback. I'm looking for a test now and the ascending trend line support coming in around 105. I'd like to see bullish reversal patterns there uh, to ultimately set longs. Looking for a test of uh, 106.76, which is monthly range resistance, and, uh, and maybe up into the 107 area for another corrective leg. I'd like to play out. Um, in the medium term, really, it would take a close below this uh, trend line support 104.50 area to suggest that the correction is complete and we're heading lower in terms of the dollar yen. And finally, uh, the Aussie dollar was the best performing currency last week amid a generalized um, risk on environment, another rally in iron ore prices was likely the key driver for Aussie app performance to its pro-cyclical peers. The currency has reached 10-year highs and iron ore is around the 170 US dollar per metric tonne, uh, levels that uh, have seen a surge in demand from China after the New Year, New Year holiday period. Commodity watchers continue to see a material risk of a downside correction from the current iron ore price, which appears unsustainable in a medium-term perspective. Declining iron ore prices may not be a story already for next week, but it represents a major downside risk for the Aussie. So with the iron ore price rise, we saw the Aussie uh, take out the price cycle highs here. Now what I'd be looking for is any back and filling to hold the, uh, the 78 handle. As it does, I'd be looking for a test of the 80 level as the next upside objective. And at this juncture, really would need to close back through 76.60 to suggest a deeper corrective phase for the Aussie dollar. That concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 22nd of February. Hope you all have a great week and I hope this helps. Thanks very much.